is Kazia. In this video, I would like to talk about the question that I posted in the previous video. So the question was about how old babies start adjusting to one particular first language. So it, again, for the rest of this lecture, I would like to talk about the monolingual family where both parents speak the exact same language. So theoretically speaking, within the critical period, you are able to hear and become native speaker of any language. You can be a native speaker of Japanese or uh, English, depending on which language your parents actually speak. But after the end of this critical period, you'll be fine-tuned to one particular language of your parents and ignoring all these other sounds that could possibly exist on this planet. So the question is, when does this happen? When does the critical period end? Is it going to be subject to a lot of individual differences? Or do researchers actually agree on this threshold? Or have there been a lot of like mixed findings on this topic? So let's take a look at the uh, first language education literature. And very interestingly, there is a good consensus about this topic. Basically, six months for the vowels, eight months for consonants. Before six months in your life, you're able to perceive any vowels. Afterwards, you can definitely hear vowels in your first language, native like proficiency level, but not these other vowels existing in other languages. And the same is true to the consonants. Now, you, you must be wondering how researchers have come to this conclusion, right? Because in the previous video, I talked about the uh, phonemic identification task as a way to measure how native, like how well you can actually hear certain sounds. But you cannot ask babies to do that task to check whether they're able to hear vowels in language A, but not in language B, because the task that I described in the previous video is quite cognitively demanding. And obviously you need to be able to understand instruction and also you, you have to understand the meaning of words, right? You cannot ask the infants to do that identification task. Do we actually need an fMRI? And do we need eye tracking, like more fancy measures beyond behavioral ones so that we could actually track what's actually babies are doing while they're exposed to uh, different kinds of sounds? There have been a lot of studies which have recently adopted these neural measures. Janet Worker, she published this about where she used the very classic behavior measures to check infants' first language perception processes. The paper was published in Child Development 1981. This study focused on the English-speaking babies. The target distinction was the English dental D versus Hindi retroflex DA. This distinction D, dental D versus retroflex DA, this does exist in Hindi, but it doesn't exist in English. In this paper, she found out that infants are able to hear the difference da versus da before the eight months. But after eight months, they won't be able to hear the difference da versus da, because in English, it doesn't exist. So this methodology is called the conditioned head turn procedure. This procedure has two phases. The number one, training phase. So this toddler with her mom, they're just uh, interacting with the research assistants. What's trickier is the uh, background sound, background noise, basically. While they're interacting, there's always the background sound. Da, 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 da. So suddenly, background sound changes from dental D to retroflex da. So then the box right next to the toddler Light up, and you can see a stuffed animal dancing. So then, obviously, the toddler will immediately notice and pay attention to it, right? So this training phase will continue. This will condition the toddler to turn her head whenever she hears the difference between da, 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 da. Then the box lights up and stuffed animal is, is dancing around. Okay? Then experimental phase comes in. So she keeps interacting with the research assistant and the, the background noise sound is always da, 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 da. So now the, the sound changes. And then this time though, there's no reward. Basically box doesn't light up. So what's really interesting here is that before eight months old, da, 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 then she would turn her head because she's able to perceive the difference between da versus da. So she has been conditioned to turn her head when he, she hears the difference, da versus da. In contrast, after eight months old, this toddler, da, 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 she won't turn her head because she won't be able to hear the difference between da versus 
Oh. Patricia Cool, she followed up and she also found out that in terms of vowel acquisition, end of the critical period actually takes place even earlier. So that's a six month. So let me just quickly summarize this. Your L1 inventories will become more stable and early in infancy. So then now the question is, how long does it take to attain more adult-like mature L1 representations? So in the next video, I'll talk about it. Thank you so much.